Hey fellas, welcome back to part two. As you can see behind me, I've got the uh, B25 on the uh, on the stand. Um, I was disappointed when I found out that my putting it on the, the gear wasn't gonna work. I did get my uh, other B25 in yesterday. Uh, um, fortunately, I got that one at a m much reduced price from an individual seller on eBay. And my uh, metal landing gear for that one is uh, is coming in uh, probably today, so I won't get started on that one for a, for till probably later in the summer because I got some other builds to do. But as you can see, <clears throat> oh, there's my dog. I've got it um, all put together. Uh, the wings I haven't. I'm not going to glue on. The, uh, the cow pieces I'm not going to glue on just in case I decide to sell this. I haven't decided or not. Um, I, I'm really liking, the, I'm really liking the, the look of it there in flight. I don't have any pilots for it, but, uh, you know, it's just one of those things. The, um, all the ailerons and flaps and everything are all glued on. <clears throat> so basically I got like maybe seven parts. I've got the... The top turret to to get to put on there which I'm not going to glue and then uh, the guns and then um, the Bombay doors and it's all together now I've got the clear coat on it uh, but before I did that I took some inks and I used sepia to kind of uh, uh, go over some of the panel lines some of the rivet lines I didn't go over all of them I just wanted to kind of give it a, a grungy uh, grungier look on some of the rivet lines and panel lines you can kind of see that Let's see where the uh, I did the sponge technique that uh, somewhat simpler version than what Will Pattison did on his but I think it turned out really well um, that's just like three shades lighter than the rest of the plane and I just sponged it in there it gives it a nice worn appearance where I've got all the chipping uh, I went over and um, you can see here instead of trying to scratch it off because I found in some places it was just too hard to get the paint off I took a, uh, a metallic colored pencil and did some uh, uh, extra chipping around some certain lines kind of stretched out some of these that I had on there <clears throat> the uh, I really like the the chipping that I did on the uh, the cow panels I think that that's uh, once I get some some oil paint in there, it's gonna look in some exhaust stains. It's gonna look really good. The um, let's see, what else did I do? Uh, let's see, I think that's about it. Um, I had to go over because I used a natural metal finish and not black as a base coat that I normally do. Um, these didn't turn out. The, uh, the ailerons didn't turn out quite as I ex had expected because I had base coated those with a uh, buff color. And they were about the same tone as, as what I had on the rest of the plane. So what I did is I just mixed some olive drab, a little bit of white, and some zinc chromate to give them a little more yellow appearance. And got those just a shade lighter. You can see that. They're just a different shade. So... Um, Next step is going to be decaling. So I'm going to go ahead and pop these off. And I'll show you how I decal. And the, the reason I want to decal next, and I think most modelers do this, um, is because when I add all the weathering and all the oil washes, and I don't think I'm going to oil wash the whole thing. Um, I kind of, I've kind of been getting away from that. The panel lines are so so fine that I don't know that oil wash is gonna stick that heavy in them and all the rivets are so small I don't know we'll see what we got but um because I, I want to I'm gonna have to weather the since I've got such a weathered weathered plane I'm gonna have to weather the decals as well so we're all gonna we're gonna do that um so I'll decal them and put another clear coat on it and then get to weathering with some oils enamels and pigments take this off let's see if I can get this off without breaking it I didn't snap these into place but these are really tight I don't want to break anything uh, 
I'm going to end up breaking this up again. There we go. Perfecto. All right. I'll sh get my uh, decal stuff set up. And, uh, oh, and, and one thing that, um, I also want to test to see if this rod, I've got a 10 millimeter rod, acrylic rod that I'm going to attach to the base. Um, I want to make sure that it could handle the, the heft and size of this plane. And it does. So I think that's going to look pretty good. All right, let's get to decaling. <clears throat> All right, decaling. So here's how I decal. And I I'd had been having a lot of problems with uh, uh, my decaling. I don't know, it just <laughs> didn't didn't seem to matter what I did. It, it just didn't turn out the way I wanted. Um, and I know some people say you don't have to use warm water, but I found the best results are with, with warm water. So I went out to Walmart and picked up some of these um, aluminum tins. And then I purchased a coffee warmer to keep my water warm. So I got my coffee warmer. I got my warm water on here. A, um, I, I use brushes to get the, uh, the decals off of the uh, film. My tweezers for handling the, uh, the, the decals, getting them in and out of the water. I got Q-tips. Uh, my micro saw and micro set over here. And what I do is I put them in little bottles, or the, the caps. And that way, <clears throat> that way if I spill it, I'm spilling a little cap full and not the whole thing. <clears throat> what I do before I start decaling is I'll cut out each individual decal uh, first so I don't have to do that while I'm just an extra step that I don't have to mess with. Now, these are aftermarket decals and there's not a whole lot of carrier film. Um, the stars and bars are the kit decals, so we'll see how those are going to work out. It doesn't look like there's any carrier film on, on there, so I'm not going to have to be too concerned with that. And with this plane, there is not a whole lot of decals to begin with. So, this is going to be a pretty easy job. Um, like with the 132nd F4, with all the stencils, it usually takes me a couple days to get it all done. So let's start with the wing. And we're gonna need a star and bar on this one. I figure out where I wanna put it. Let's see. Get a couple different reference picks here to make sure I get it in the right place. This is one that I want right here. It's going to go slightly, so I know that this part of the star goes along this panel line, basically dissects it, and it's going to be about that far. So what I'm going to do is dip my decal into the warm water. And when it's warm, shouldn't take it that long to, there we go. Can let that sit for a bit. And I'm gonna take some, and I, I like to use a bigger brush just because sometimes a Q-tip gets hair in it. So let's put some micro salt on there. I'm gonna put a little bit of water on here just cause I may have to do some adjusting. And with this being such a big decal, I'm not going to need my brush to get it off. Okay, let's get it to where we want it. Okay. Looks pretty good. I'm going to dip this in a little bit of water. I'm going to go out from the center, try to tamp it down a little bit. And basically what I'm trying to do is get all the air in the water from underneath the decal out. 
And with this being such a big decal, instead of using micro set or micro saw on it at, at the beginning, I think I'm going to use a blow dryer. And I found that works really well to get them to uh, settle down. And when I did a, I did a wing nut wings kit, the uh, one of the Fockers. Um, and there was a lot of lozen lozenge decals that go on the uh, the surfaces of the uh, the wings, and they recommended not using decal fluid, decal setting solution, because it would it would ruin the decal. I found that not to be the case, but I used a they recommended a hair dryer, and it worked out really well. It really sucked the decals down in there. And what I found is uh, you can heat it up with a hair dryer and it kind of melts the decal a little bit. And then if you're careful, you can come back along with a, with a cotton swab and push it into the little panel lines. You can already see I got some air bubbles in there. And one thing about using Q-tips is you get these little hairs. I've got the better Q-tips, but if you're going to use Q-tips for, for putting your decals down, try to get, these are kind of furry. Get the ones that, and there's some cheaper ones that uh, don't have as much fur. They're wound a little bit tighter. Those are better to use. All right, I'm going to take another paper towel and kind of wipe that. I'm going to come back with some, uh, I think what I'm going to do is use some, some oil paint and uh, I got an air bubble in there. Use some oil paint and weather the decals, fade them. I got some white, off-white oil paint. I'll probably come in and fade out that dark blue color so I can weather it with the rest of the plane. Okay. Now I know they're gonna be air bubbles because in this, I can see it right now, but that's not gonna be that big of an issue if I got a few tiny ones, I can just come back in, stick a, a needle in them and dab a little bit of micro saw on there and it'll Hopefully, suck those out. Okay. All right, I'm gonna hit this with an air dryer. Take my brush, get a little wet, and I can see those panel lines and those rivet lines coming through. Just gonna kind of <laughs> brush it out and suck down in there. Okay, one more time. I've got a heat gun, but I would not recommend using a heat gun on these. And I think that'll just melt the the decals and plastic all at the same time. So I just use a, a hair dryer on high heat and it gets them down pretty quick. So you can kind of see that the those rivets are starting to show through. And that should, these are, this is the kit decal and it's actually looking pretty good. I'm happy with it. It's a couple air bubbles, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this one dry. And then I'll come back and, and that's one of the things I've learned just to be patient with decals is 
let them dry, let them get, get uh, where they're going to go. And sometimes you don't even need to mess with them after that. Um, so I'm going to let these dry, see where we're at. And I'll probably end up having to pop a few bubbles and putting some microsol on there. But it uh, looks like they're going to work out pretty good. So it's not going to take me too long to do these. I'll get these done and um, get a clear coat on them. I'll show you the result and then we'll get to using some oils and enamels. All right. <clears throat> well, I screwed up and thought my video was turned on and it wasn't. So I didn't get to show you. Uh, how I faded these, but I will explain it. So basically what I did is I took uh, heavily diluted white paint, uh, probably 90% thinner, 10% paint, and then I took a um, my little circle stencil here, and I went around and I faded, tried to get inside the uh, inside the little rivet lines, just, I just wanted to give it a, a patchy appearance and then I, I took it and I faded more so the bottom and then I took post-it notes and you don't want to use tape on these because <clears throat> it'll lift those decals right up but I just took a post-it note and then I was able to get these get these edges and I tried to get it blended in as well as I could um, I probably could have done the same thing with uh, oil paint but I decided to do it this way just to try it out and I think it turned out okay from some of the reference pictures I've seen um, these these top uh, uh, stars and bars insignias can get really faded and as weathered as I got this I kind of wanted it to, to match I didn't want a, a bright brand new star and bar on there uh, with all this faded weathered war weary plane uh, you can see I kind of I kind of did this one the same way Only I didn't do it as much. I just gave it a little bit Just because it's on the bottom part and then once once I uh, I put washes and get some oils in there. It's gonna blend it all in and, and bring it back bring it all together. I also did the um, The fuselage stars and bars I didn't do them as much. I kind of tried to stay on the top I also chipped away some of the, the decal and again once I get some some uh, oils on there <clears throat> it's gonna bring it all together and, and blend it all in so that's where I'm at I'm gonna get a clear coat on this uh, one thing I wanted to point out with this natural metal finish it is um, very fragile and where I had it on the uh, the mat here it's kind of scratched it up and that's not that big a deal. I can just go in with a fine airbrush and touch up where I need to touch up. Um, a lot of times I'll do that even after I put the clear coats on it. doesn't matter when. <clears throat> um, but I am going to put a flat coat over this, so I want to do it before I put the flat coat on. So that's where I'm at with this. I'm going to uh, get these all clear coated, and then the next step will be throwing some oil paints to it. All right, here's where we're at, fellas. I've got a, uh, what I did off camera is I put a, an oil wash. It's like a black brown homemade oil wash over the entire plane. And uh, to get into the panel lines, it, it didn't stick real well, but uh, where it did, it, I mean, it, uh, it gives it a nice grungy overall appearance. See if I can manhandle it here. But uh, I put an oil wash over the whole plane, put another clear coat on it. I touched up some of the areas where there where the natural metal finish had kind of worn off in places from from setting it down and, and and rubbing out some of the oil wash. Apparently my clear coat wasn't as thick as it should have been. The decals are all looking pretty good. I chipped them in a couple different places, and uh, what I'm going to do next is the uh, the fuel stains on the wings. One thing I did here was kind of my my test base, but I decided that I wanted to, and because of this, I didn't have pilots. 
I wanted a uh, just a base. I didn't want any type of diorama. Um, almost like a, I don't know, may, like maybe a museum piece or something. It's kind of the look that I was looking for. Um, so I came up with this idea. And this is basically just a wood base that I stained the edges, taped them off. And then uh, I made a, a mask with frisket of the stars and bars. Spray painted the top white, laid down my mask, and then I came back because I wanted a, like a natural metal finish type like you'd see on the side of a plane. So I, I uh, just threw in some blue and some black, real light misty coats on top, lifted up the, uh, the uh, part of the mask where uh, the blue was. I painted the blue in for the stars and bars, then lifted up all the masks and put, um, just taped off some, some panel lines, did those with some gray and some white. Then I came back and made my own little um, mask for rivets and uh, airbrushed all these rivets in, dark on the bottom, white on the top. And then I came back and freehanded around the rivets um, based on a couple of videos that I watched to make them look like they're indented into the, uh, the aluminum. And that, uh, I think it turned out really well. My acrylic rod <clears throat> It's gonna go here. Kind of tight, so I'm gonna have to work it in. And then the plane is gonna sit on it. Get this in there. Just like so. And I think that's gonna look pretty cool. So even though I didn't uh, get the landing gear that I even though I was going to put it on landing gear and it didn't kind of didn't quite turn out the way I'd expected, um, I think this will be pretty cool. And and there's my other kit. And I actually got these G-Force landing gear in for this other with this next one that I'm going to do. Um, hold on a second. And these are really nice. They're a lot better than the uh, as I'd mentioned them earlier. They're a lot better than the white metal. They're real solid. I mean, they're, they're hard metal. They're a lot cleaner. There's still a little bit of cleanup to do, but they're, they don't bend. Um, at least that I can see, they're, they're real sturdy. So if you're gonna get this kit, I would recommend these um, G-Force landing gear here. So that's about it. We're gonna get the exhaust stains on and then uh, do some oil work. I'll grind you, I'll put, uh, probably do some, some work on the top. I might, uh, make some streaks along the side to to emulate maybe dirt and grime and dust and uh some oil streaks and and then i think we'll be ready for the flat coat and then final assembly so be back shortly all right <clears throat> as you can see here i just did some uh fuel stains and i thought i had my camera going but again i'm I'm having issues with my phone. I'm not very smart. Um, what I did is I uh, took a mixture of probably 80% isopropyl alcohol and some buff or deck tan, and I went over and I made the uh, the wide stains, the, the the smoke stains from the exhaust, and then I took some some uh, some brown flat brown and um, NATO black mixed about 90% alcohol and 10% paint. And then I went along and did the, uh, the center and made, uh, made these uh, smoke stains. So, what I'm going to do next is clear coat this, get it, uh, get, get my work saved because I'm going to do some oil washes, uh, put some probably fuel stains or some uh, 
oil stains streaking along the uh, the uh, the cowl here, the engine to sell, and and then we'll um, do probably some uh, oil work on the rest of the plane, and then we're ready for a flat coat, I think, and we'll be done with this bird. Uh, we're going to start the oil work with the propellers. I've got Earth, I believe that's buff, some sepia, uh, faded green, off-white, raw umber, and black. And those are the only colors I'm going to use on this particular job. So we're going to start off on the propellers, and I'm just putting some little dots of different colors. On, on the propellers to kind of mimic the dirt and grime that would accumulate with bugs and dirt and all kinds of other stuff on here. So we're just throwing some lighter colors on this black. I'll use the, uh, the earth and the off-white. And then what I'm gonna do Take my take a soft bristled brush. I don't want I don't want uh, too much mineral spirits on here. I'm just going to kind of blend these in in a downward motion. This one is not very soft. I'm going to get a different one. We're just gonna try to blend these in. I might got a little too much. One of the good things with oil oil paints is that if you make a mistake, you just wipe it off. But what this does is it kind of brings everything together, brings the decals in, blends 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 everything together. Okay. And I may go over that again with a with a different brush. I'm going to kind of let that dry a little bit and see where we're at. But that's basically kind of what we're looking for here. Now let's do some work on the fuselage. I'm going to set these aside. I may come back to those, but <clears throat> all right. Now the main thing that I want to do here on the fuselage, uh, besides some streaking, is I want to kind of dirty up this area. Uh, I would think that with all the uh, with an active gun emplacement you would probably have a lot of maybe gunpowder or, or dirt up here. So basically what I'm doing is just adding almost like a filter. Now let me get a dry brush. A larger soft bristled dry brush. And we're just going to kind of blend this. And just dirty it up. And you can smooth it out. Okay. 
I just, I don't want it caked on there. It's not something, it's going to be readily noticeable. But it's just going to give it a little dirtier, grimier appearance. And I may come back with a little more. kind of fun to weather weather planes like this that's why I like doing the uh, the f-14 Tomcat um, I uh, do a lot of MAK kits machining Krieger sci-fi kits and I can really go to town and just pretty much do what I want and I've learned a lot by experimenting with those with those on how to get something dirty and rusty and Obviously, there's not a whole lot of rust with, with planes, but the concept's all the same. Just blend it in where I want it. And the good thing about oil paints is you can play with it and manipulate it and erase it, and it's kind of hard to mess it up. And for the sides, let me zoom out. For the sides, what I want to do is kind of give a little bit of uh, streaking. So basically what I'm doing is I'm taking this buff color Just making some streaks. Maybe a little bit of earth. Okay. Blend that in. And just a little just a just a little variation in color like maybe the uh, you know just the water and all the elements dripping down with gravity It's slight, but it's still there. And I'll play with those a little bit. I may add, subtract, but I'll play a little play with that a little bit off camera. But you kind of get the idea. Now for the top, for some more faded areas, I'm gonna do some dot filtering up here with a little bit of white. Maybe up here on top. Okay, let me get a different brush. And we're just gonna kind of blend this in. Give it a little more sun bleached, faded appearance.
just in places. Give it a little more depth, a little more color. And I'll go around the whole plane and do that in certain areas. And again, it's subtle, but when you put all these subtleties together, um, you get what I believe to be a really good finished product. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. <coughs> um, I'll do some streaking on the wings and then, uh, then we'll put a clear coat, um, flat coat on it and it should be done. So this is gonna be it for the uh, part two of the painting. And the next one I'm going to do will be the, uh, the finished product. And we'll go over it and go over all the likes and dislikes of the kit once it's completely finished. And um, I'll show you the finished product.